Hey there, welcome to Hiker Homily number 12 for the week of March 19th. We're moving right along. Um, so for the intro, uh, a couple of, couple of things. Number one, uh, the computer situation. Uh, it is still at the shop, so I will be editing this video on my backup and it'll work okay. And you'll probably notice that the, the intro music is still not the fancy one I had all set up. Um, so what's going on with that is, indeed, it was the hard drive. The hard drive is shot for some reason, and I don't know what's up with that. It, it happens. I mean, the computer, I, the computer is three or four years old, and uh, so to me, that's not that old, really. But I know computer-wise, that's getting up there and things. Uh, it's still a pretty decent computer with, you know, it's got like a, a terabyte worth of, of room in the thing. So anyway, uh, the folks at uh, the shop said that they're going to do their best to recover as much data as they can. They don't know how much they can recover. They may be able to get it all and put it on the new hard drive. They may only be able to get some of it because they don't exactly know exactly what is wrong with the hard drive. They just know that it's not working anymore. So I will have my computer back sometime this week. Obviously not in time for, for this. But sometime this week I will have my main computer back um, and hopefully with certain um, stuff on it so that I can get back to the the fun hiker homily intros and, th and things like that that I had set up if not uh, I'll just I'll, I'll and that just means I have to go the long way around and, and put another one together no big deal like I say most of the important stuff that I have family pictures and and things I also kind of write on the side just for fun a lot of that kind of stuff that's all backed up I haven't lost any of that but some of my like little stuff like I had, you know, put together that little intro for Hiker Homily and for my gear reviews and stuff. Some of that stuff might be lost if they can't recover it. Eh, I'll just have to do that over again. It's no big deal. So that's what's going on with the computer. And then the other thing to go over is weather. Uh, I put up a thing on my Facebook page, not on my hiking page, but on my personal page. But it kind of is. It kind of fits. Um, out here, at least in California, I know back east you're having an even worse. You've had like what three nor'easters now blow through and just hammer you guys and things like that. Um, it's like winter is mad and uh, leaves the room but then keeps coming back and says another thing. And, you know, it's just it's just crazy. They Winter just keeps coming back. Um, here we are, the middle of March. We should be, usually here in Northern California, middle of March, we should be starting to look at spring. Um, but we're not. Uh, I have a break today. I may get out there to do some miles today because it's been raining the last, like, I want to say four or five days. It's been raining. Today we have a break. There's no rain forecast whatsoever, and the weather is supposed to get up to, like, 69 degrees. So that's not too bad at all. Um, and I can see outside right now there's a little bit of sun out, and it's, it's, it's kind of nice. So I'm probably going to get out there just to do, at least do a few miles because it's been raining and I haven't been doing a whole lot in the last week or so and things like that. But then tomorrow... More rain, and that's going to last until about Friday. What the heck? <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what's going on with that. Um, so I haven't been getting out much. I've been doing a lot of other little things and stuff like that. It's been pretty cool. Uh, one thing I have signed up for next weekend, and I'll you know do a little bit of footage and do a blurb on it. Um, Saturday and Sunday of next weekend, I am taking a wilderness first aid course. Uh, that is uh, being sponsored and given by the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, uh, I'm doing that for two reasons. Number one, uh, I already am a first aid CPR instructor for first responders. I did that in my, my old career. I was a, a, an instructor and things like that for first aid CPR, so I know it. Wilderness first aid is a little bit of a different animal, so I wanted to get that experience. I wanted to get that in there. And also coming up in the future with my son's troop, I will be a venturing counselor, um, kind of an assistant adult for venturing. If you don't know what venturing is, it's a Boy Scout program for uh, uh, young men ages, I think somewhere around 14 or 15 they have to be, all the way into their early 20s. They can stay in venturing and things. And it is a scout-led, you know, the venturing scouts, they decide what they're going to do and, and stuff like that, and we adults are just kind of there as advisors, basically. And I will be an advisor for that. Um, and they tend to do the fun stuff that a lot of Boy Scouts really get into because they're at the point where they don't have to worry too much about merit badges. 
and things like that. They just like, if they want to go backpacking, then they just, they go backpacking all the time. That's what the venturing crew does. Um, there are venturing crews out there that don't do anything but uh, mountain biking. They don't do anything but climbing. Um, stuff like that. And then others that they just do a lot of what the, what the Boy Scouts call high adventure stuff. Kayaking, backpacking, climbing, things like that. They concentrate on that. So that's kind of a cool thing. We're going to be moving towards that with some of the boys in, in the troop. They will become a venturing crew. And they want some of the folks in that crew, whether it's the adult advisors or the scouts themselves, to be trained in wilderness first aid for obvious reasons. And so I'm going to be getting that training for that reason as well. So that's what's coming up there with that. <sighs> Still not able to set up my uh, uh, Fremont Peak hike. Um, I, I got to figure out a date, but I'm telling you what, uh, most of the April weekends are filled up with, with either family things or other in, important stuff that's going on. Haven't been able to set a date up. So we're going to do what I can. But still some fun stuff coming up. Some neat things that I'm going to try and get out there for you. Uh, but that's our intro and off we go into Hiker Homily for the week of March 19th. So this week's hiker topic shouldn't take too long to talk about, but if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I'm, I'm I ramble. I just do. I just I just start rambling. Um, but today's uh, this week's uh, hiker topic is kids on the trail, and that should be a, a fairly simple thing, and it should be common sense. There's a lot of people who want to make it more complicated than it has to be, but it's it's not complicated at all. Number one, you have to be a parent. Um, if you know me in real life or get to know me, uh, you will know, and I'm going to tell you right now, um, I am a big one on parental responsibilities. You should be responsible for your kid's behavior and, and how they react to things. That's your job to teach them. It is not a teacher in school's job to teach them um, how to react and respond to things and to be kind to people and things like that. I'm sure there are plenty of school programs that help teach that, but that shouldn't be their job. That should be your job. That's my job with my kids. It should be your job with your kids. I'm um, not trying to lecture. I'm just saying parental responsibility is a big thing. Um, what you allow your kids to get away with, they will just keep doing and getting away with. All right? And I'm not talking about having to be this hardcore. And you, you ask my kids. I... I I am not a hardcore, mean type of person. They weren't allowed to do anything. I encourage my kids to try things and go out and do things and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I always was mindful of safety and rules that I put on them were there for safety. They were safety rules. You can't do this. I know you really want to do blah, 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 blah. That's awesome. Let's go do that. But here's what we're not going to do along with that. We're not going to do it without a helmet. We're not going to do this. We're not going to go that direction because, you know, sorry, the rules say we can't get... We're going to respect that and, and that those are there for safety, that kind of thing. Um, parental responsibility is the huge thing. And along with that, being a responsible parent means you know your child. Okay? Because that's what a lot of people, you, you see them pop up online. What's the minimum age for bringing a kid on the trail? There is no minimum age. I'm going to say that right up front. There is none. There's a bunch of people out there. Oh, 10, 10 years old should be good. Uh, 12, 7. You're going to get all kinds of numbers. Again, like I said, in one of the hiker homilies, you ask five hikers um, a question, you're going to get six different answers. Um, because you know, just hikers like to, uh, to argue about that kind of stuff. But it, that, that's the thing is, you have to know your child. My daughter went on her first backpack trip at age five. Okay, She walked a six-mile trail, including crossing over Castle Ridge, which is... Elevation, I want to say 7,800, somewhere around there. You know, high 7,000s. She walked that up on over the ridge and down into Round Valley and all that kind of stuff. She made it. Now, granted, I had her pack lightened up. She had her own pack, her own backpack. She did really good. She carried her sleeping bag. She carried some snacks for herself. She carried about half a liter of water um, and her clothing and things like that was in her pack. I... She shared a tent with me, so I had a two-person tent. I carried the tent. I carried most of the food. I carried the rest of her water and and things like that. I carried all the cooking utensils. I carried the uh, the water filter, all that, that kind of stuff I was carrying. She was just carrying her basic stuff, um, and she did great. Five years old, this little turkey burger up and over the ridge, and, and we had a good time on, on that trip. Now, she was never bitten by the, the hiking bug like her old man was. Um, she didn't do a whole lot of backpacking, at least so far. She's uh, almost 19 now. Who knows? It may it may still get her. Um, 
Uh, but she's always had a lot of camping experience and stuff like that. And, you know, I felt she was ready at age five, and she did just fine. Now, there are other kids out there that no matter how much you want them to be at age five, they are not ready to hike an overnight hike. They might be able to handle some day stuff. But, um, for example, my son at age five was not ready for overnight hikes. He just wasn't. Um, and it was a little bit later we got him out there backpacking, and even then he didn't have the greatest of times, so we kind of slacked off on that. And now he's gotten to the point where he's doing better on day hikes and stuff. He just finished uh, with me and his Boy Scout troop a little while ago, a, uh, a few months ago, way back in October, a 20-mile hike in one day, and that was pretty awesome. And he did great. He came in at the end still with enough energy to run. I mean, he was doing great. So there it is. Different kids are going to be different, and as a parent, you need to know your child. And that's the bottom line. For kids on the trail, you need to have parental responsibility, control your children, teach them how to be courteous on the trail and the trail etiquette, teach them, you know, leave no trace, how to uh, handle themselves on the trail, and read the signs. Know the signs of your kid that he is at the point or she is at the point um, where they're not going to be able to go any further. Because that was the thing with my daughter. We had hoped to get up over the ridge and into Round Valley, but myself and... Um, her uncle, who was with me on the trip, the two of us took her out there um, for her first trip. We both knew that we were going to read the signs, and as she went up the trail, if she was not able to get up and over that ridge, we had alternate camp spots to go to to take care of that. We were ready for that, just in case. As, as it worked out, she did fine. She got up over the ridge all the way into Round Valley. We camped there, and then we came out the next day. Not a problem. Um, but we were prepared for the fact that if her limits were pushed and she got to this certain point and couldn't go any further, we were ready for it. We had alternate things to handle, okay, and, and, and places to go. Okay, we're not going to make Round Valley, so we're going to go here and we'll get her to this point and, and that'll be fine type of thing. Um, we were prepared. We just knew that, okay, I think she can make it. I'm reading her. I'm pretty sure. I'm watching her on the trail. But just in case, we, you know, and that's what it is. Be prepared. Again, I'll say it more than one time. I've said it in so many other updates and hiker homilies and things like that. And I'm going to say it many times in the future. Be prepared is not just a Boy Scout thing. That's part of Leave No Trace. And it should be part of anyone's thinking who does any kind of hiking. You should always do your research. Be prepared. And, and look into things. Um, no plan is going to get past the first few miles of a hike. You're going to have to change things because environment's going to, you know, make you change things. Oh, that didn't work. I was hoping to find water here, but there's not. But fortunately, I was prepared. I'm carrying a little extra, and I've got another source coming up, blah, blah, blah. Just different little examples like that. You're going to have to change plans, but have a plan. Don't just like, well, if I'm going to change the plan, screw it. I'm just going to head on out there with my kid and just... just don't do that, okay? Have a plan. Have alternate plans. In case this plan doesn't work, plan B is over here. and Plan C is over here. and Be ready for that kind of thing. Be prepared. You don't have to be a Boy Scout to follow that. I'm going to say that over and over because if it's the one thing you need to do when you are backpacking in the backcountry uh, or even day hiking is be prepared. And uh, especially if you're going out there with a child, that, that's huge. It's just huge. If you're going out there with, with a young person, um, especially if they're very young, you need to be ready. And know when to pull the plug on it if it's not working. So that's uh, my take on it for, uh, for kids on the trail and kids hiking. And this week, I have some feedback, some comments to go over. That's kind of fun. I like doing that. You know, I've been able to do that once before. This time I have a few more that I wanted to go over. Because um, it's just it's just kind of fun. It kind of it helps validate the fact that I you know again I've said before I am doing this uh, this vlog thing hiker homily uh, mostly for fun. I'm enjoying doing it, and if people get information out of the subjects I talk about, fantastic. Um, it started out as kind of my own personal tracking thing to keep me honest on the weight loss and stuff like that. But I've kind of moved towards just enjoying talking about hiking topics and things like that, giving my opinion and seeing if people. You know, agree or, or disagree with that opinion, stuff like that. But if I don't get feedback, it's kind of hard to tell. Well, I've got some feedback. And by the way, the first thing I'm going to start with is a couple of comments I got. I got, you know, the few people who are subscribed to me, boy, do I got your number. If I want feedback, apparently the secret is bacon. 
Yeah, because if you remember, I decided to do something a little different. Last week's Hiker Homily, I was in the kitchen cooking bacon to put into the, uh, the green beans and stuff like that. And half of the comments I got were about the bacon, okay? We had uh, Mark Miller says, bacon sounds good about now. And, and believe me, it sounded good when I was cooking it, and it tasted good when it was put in the green beans. And I can neither confirm nor deny the fact that, you know, some of that bacon got eaten before it got into the green beans. We won't talk about that. It's a, it's a, a dark period in my, in my past that I've moved, moved beyond. Um, and I also got a similar comment from The Chubby Hiker. And let me just stop right there. If you haven't seen her YouTube channel, her YouTube channel is called The Chubby Hiker. She is absolutely incredible. I subscribe to her. I, I, I'm, it's hard for me to give a recommendation because I've only got like you know 30. She has more subscribers than me, I think, right now. 30 subscribers. But if any of you who are subscribing to me or you see this on Instagram, you see this on, on uh, my YouTube channel, um, I so suggest you subscribe to her and support her. Her videos are amazing. They are so fun. She has such an infectious laugh. When she starts laughing about some of the things that she's doing and stuff like that, you can't help but laugh along. Her videos are fantastic. She's an amazing person. And she's doing the PCT this year. And so support her. It is amazing what she's doing. Um, I envy her. Uh, my PCT hike is maybe a year off. She's just getting ready to start hers. It's going to be amazing. So the chubby hiker says, I can totally smell that bacon cooking. Let me tell you what. So could I because it was cooking. And like I said, dark dark period in my history. And some of that bacon may not have made it into the green beans. It, yeah, it, it, may, it may have been devoured before that. So there it is. I mean, I, I, out of the four comments I'm going to cover, two of them were on the bacon. Thanks a lot, you guys. Now I know how to, if I want more comments, I, I'm going to get back in the kitchen and start cooking bacon. That's what, Apparently that's what it takes. That's what it takes to get you all to start commenting is bacon. All right. All right, I did get a comment about, uh, uh, now I cannot remember what number Hiker Homily it is, but it's when I did the trail terms uh, Nobo and Sobo. And that comes from a friend of mine that I've known for quite a while, Heather Dahlman. She says, very interesting. I guessed what a zero day was, but not a Nero day near zero. Dope. Yes. Um, and it is. It's you know you might not guess what that is. They, you know their names are fairly self-explanatory. But again, they're not super common terms. Even if you are a hiker, you like to day hike and stuff like that. Mostly the terms Nero and Zero are very exclusive to the long trail through hiking community, um, because they are calculating their hikes and and all that kind of thing. Uh, and 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 they have to figure out. Okay, this day is going to be a zero day, and so that means the next few days I'm going to have to make up miles. You know, because they're aiming for an endpoint at a certain date and things like that. So they need to figure those out. So that's mostly through hiker terms and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, they, they, they seem to be kind of obvious, but maybe not. And like I said in the thing, the hiking community will argue about the most craziest things. And even the term zero gets argued about sometimes. It's just whatever. Um, and uh, the last comment, uh, again, plugging the chubby hiker, she's amazing. She commented on last week's Hiker Homily. I've had such a blast making my videos. I absolutely love, uh, love it too. Sorry about your computer. Technology sucks sometimes. And it is true. It was kind of a bummer. Like I say, I'm literally in the middle of editing uh, my uh, hike report for Feather Falls. And once I get my computer back, I will be doing that hike report. I still have all that footage. I'll just have to reload it if they can't save it and stuff. I had already put on the computer. I'll just reload it all from the old GoPro camera and from my phone, and, and I'll have all that. So I will get the, the hike report uh, for Feather Falls done. I'm just waiting for my equipment to come back. And yes, ma'am, you are correct. It is very frustrating sometimes. I hope you don't have any issues on the trail, but I know sometimes that happens. So don't let it frustrate you. Don't, don't let it get you down. And, and, uh, and she's right. It, it is... Uh, and you can tell, again, I'm going to plug her again for, for her videos. You can tell she enjoys doing her videos. She has so much fun. And again, there's a couple of videos where she did some stuff that just cracked herself up. And just her laugh, you can't help but laugh along. It's so fun to watch her videos. So that's the Chubby Hiker on YouTube. Um, and she's going to be doing the PCT this year. Totally recommend you subscribe to her and give her support and, and, and follow her on the trail. Um, 
I think it's going to be really cool, and and just because her attitude is so awesome. Uh, last year, I watched a, a guy named his trail name is Chocolate Balls, and that was one of the fun things about watching his hikes was he always started his videos with a hearty good morning, and just his his positivity was part of what was fun, even if it was kind of a Nothing really happened today. I kind of walked here, or maybe even it was a zero day he was talking about that he did in town. Just the fact that he was so positive made it fun to watch, and I really think that the Chubby Hiker, that's the name of the YouTube channel, I think it's going to be the same there. Her, her attitude is so positive. It, it, I, it just, it's infectious. It's fantastic. So, yes, uh, I do have fun doing the videos, too. It, it's just kind of fun talking about hiking and and stuff like that and it's also fun to connect with people who are also hikers and are interested in hiking and things like that through feedback like this so thanks very much so if you want to have feedback on anything i've talked about in any other past hiker homilies or on kids on the trail the subject for this week or any of that kind of thing you can get a hold of me at the email hiking for health ca at gmail.com or you can leave a comment below this video. You can leave a comment on the video when it gets posted to uh, Facebook. And I always do a little announcement on Instagram about the video. You can leave a comment there too. Um, maybe uh, I'll have an answer for you or maybe you'll part, impart some information that's uh, really cool to know and we'll pass that on and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but feel free to contact me at, in, in, those, uh, in those various ways that you can contact me. Other than that, that is Hiker Homily number 12 for the week of March 19th. And again, winter is about to storm back in tomorrow and say another thing and give us some more rain for the next three or four days. And then it looks like the forecast is clear and we're heading into the low 70s as far as temperatures go for the day. So I am hoping to get back out there doing more training hikes at the very least, if not more actual hikes and stuff uh, when I can. That's the plan, and we're looking into it, and there's other stuff coming up that I'll be uh, talking about later. But other than that, that's Hiker Homily number 12. Thanks, as always, so much for watching and sticking with me. And those of you who do give me feedback and comments, super thanks. Appreciate it so much. And we'll see you, well, you know how I say it, next week.